Okay. In this talk, we're going to do a few exercises involving uh, manipulating equations in groups. So the first one says, you have a group and a finite subset, A, of the group G, and you want to prove that if X is an element of the group, then the size of A is the same as the size of A times X. The size of a set is just the number of elements and it's denoted with this absolute value type symbol. That's what I'm denoting it by. Okay, so why is this true? Why do, why do A and AX have the same size? How is AX defined? Hmm? The element of A times star. So it's the set of all elements. You don't have to say star now. Now we are in a group. So just, it's little a times x, where little a varies over a. So why are these sets, why do they have the same size? Well, to prove two sets are the same size, one way is you just say, here's a bijection between them. You know what a bijection is? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's a natural choice of bijection between A and AX? Hmm? Sends A to AX. Okay, sends little a to little AX. Now, why is that a bijection? Let me write that down. So you're trying to define a map from A to AX given by little a maps to little a. First of all, is this well defined? Yes. Does it send things in A to things in AX? Yes, because that's the definition of AX, right? Mm -hmm. Is it surjective? Yes, because again, the definition of AX is defined, it's defined as the thing which can be written in this form. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's uh, well defined and surjective. So what do we need to show? To complete the proof that it's bijective? In in injective. Okay, so why is it injective? Because of consolidation. Exactly. Okay, so let me just remind you, so if, if A, so yeah, if A1x equal to A2x, so if two elements A1 and A2 of A map to the same thing, then that would imply that A1 equal to A2, okay, which is exactly what saying that it's injective, right? Different things cannot map to the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So therefore, you have a bijection between A and AX. And therefore, uh, the sets have the same size. Okay. Good. Now the next one. Can you read the next one? What does it say? Just read it aloud. So group G subset A. Mm -hmm. And X is an element of G. Uh -huh. A X intersects A. Mm -hmm. It's now empty if and only if x equals to a inverse b is so such so long and complicated okay so i mean this part's just a setup okay now okay can you can you prove this let's go from this direction to this direction i mean from here to here so suppose ax intersect a is non empty what does that mean there exists a in a such that ax equals to a. Not equal to a. It could be some other element of a, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so there exists a in a, and let's say there exists a, a x equals and they call to it the other element b, mm -hmm. such that ax equal to b. A and B may be equal if X is the identity element, otherwise it won't be, but I'm not restricting that. I'm just saying there's an element in A and another element is such that this is equal. That's what it means. So AX intersect A non-empty means exactly this, right? Okay, now what do you do? Times A inverse on Now multiply by inverse on both sides, on the left. That's like transposing the A to the other side, right? Or trying to isolate for x. So you get what? x equals to a inverse b. Okay, are we done? Well, we've shown this implies this. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the other direction? Suppose x can be written in the form a inverse b. 
So suppose you know that x is of the form a inverse b for some a and b in a. Can you conclude that ax intersect a is non-empty? Yes. How do you do it? Times a over. So you would you sort of start by start from here. You multiply by a on the left and get this, but now you won't write there exists a and b. It's rather the a and b are already given. So you won't write it exactly. I couldn't just put put uh, two way things here, but the idea is you just go backward along the way. You start with here, multiply by a, get ax equal b, and therefore you say that this element b, which is also ax, is in both ax and in a. So the intersection is non empty. Okay, done? Okay, next one. You have a group. So, by the way, I, I, I keep talking of finite subsets. Well, as the first and the third one, I talked about finite subsets. But it's not really important that they're finite. I just talk of finite so that if you haven't seen the concept of size for infinite sets, it's kind of, I don't want to confuse you with it because there's lots of subtleties associated with size for infinite sets, right? You've seen some weird things with infinite sets and their sizes? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So that's why I'm restricting to finite subsets. So many things I say have analogs for infinite sets. Okay, so the next one. So you have a group. Oh, but the second one didn't use finite. The first one did and the third one does. Okay, so a group and you have two finite subsets. Maybe they're the same. They could be equal. Cool. The point is you have, you have these subsets and you want to show that the size of the product of the subsets is less than equal to the product of the sizes. Now, what is the product of two subsets defined as? How is AB defined? Uh, little a times little b for all a and b in a and b. Yes, so it's just the set of all products. Now, what's a set whose size is size of a times size of b? You can take the Cartesian product, a cross b, right? That has size exactly size a times size b, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to do is, or rather, Okay, I'll just write it down here, and you can fill it. I want to think of a map like this. A set map from the Cartesian product of A and B to AB. And that's going to help me prove this. So what, what's the natural map from A cross B to AB? What are the elements of A cross B like? A cross B just means pairs of elements mm -hmm. in A and B. What are those elements like? AB. A comma B. They aren't products, they're just... Yeah, a comma b map to a b. Okay, so this map is just a comma b goes to a b. You just take two elements, maybe they're the same, doesn't matter, but you take two elements and you multiply them. Okay, now what can you say about this map? Is it well defined? Does it send, does it go inside a b? Yeah. Is it surjective to a b? Yes. Yes, because that's the definition of a b. So, you have a surjective map from this set to this set. What does that tell you about the sizes of the two sets? Or the relation between the sizes of the two sets? Well, the size of the first one must be greater than the size of the second one. Greater than or equal to. Mm -hmm. If it's actually injective as well, then we have bijection, they'll be equal, but it could be strictly greater. So, does that give you this? Yeah. Because, uh, because mod A times mod B is just the size of A cross B. Okay, so, so we got this one. Okay. Okay, good. So now let's do... Use this. Okay, yeah, now let's do the... Okay, now let's do this one. Finite group G and you have a subset A, and let's say that the cardinality of G, the size of G, which by the way, if it's actually a group, the size is also called the order. But uh, if, even if you haven't seen that, that's not an issue. So the size of G is greater than the square of the size of A. Okay? What you want to prove is, you want to prove that there exists X in G such that AX intersect A is empty. Hmm. And you have to use two of the things above. Hmm. You, you, I mean, this one, you have to use these two. 
plus something else, something small. Just doing it directly is pretty hard. Okay, maybe you can stop this here and we'll resume this in the next video. Why? Well, just so we can think about this a bit.